Hey, it's Mr. K doing a video for Physics 1. Uh, we're looking at a ball drop scenario where we drop a ball from 2 meters up in height and it's going to fall down to the ground. It's going to bounce back up to 1 meter, basically losing half its height. Simple lab that we do in class. We're also going to look at the, uh, the bounce itself and this is going to deal with energy and momentum. So to start off, this guy starts off with no velocity up here. It's going to gain velocity and momentum and kinetic energy when it comes down here. It's going to bounce off the ground, change directions, come back up here and again we're going to have a velocity of zero. So Looking at this, putting units on here just to be good, let's start off by looking at some energy. So to start off up here, we've got some potential energy, gravitational potential because we have the force of gravity acting on it. The earth is pulling it down for some distance and that force is going to be mg. The distance will be some h, that's going to be 2 in our case, and if we look, our starting mass, well, our mass the whole time is 0.5 kilograms. G is going to be about 10 for us. We're just going to round that 9.8. And then H is going to be a change of 2 meters. And so <clears throat> I've got 2 times 0.5. That's going to be 1. 1 times 10 is going to be 10. That's going to be 10 joules of energy. Okay. Guaranteed when we get down here, we're going to keep that 10 joules. We're not going to talk about air resistance here. Uh, over here, we're going to go back up again to some potential energy. So another MGH. 0.5. <clears throat> G again is 10, but the H is now 1. So we're just going to take half a 10. Half 10 is going to be 5 joules. And so you see that we drop from 10 joules to 5 joules. We lose half of our energy. Half the height goes away. That kind of makes sense. The other question that we might have is, hey, what's the velocity at the bottom? And so for the velocity at the bottom, we're going to take a look at kinetic energy. And kinetic energy, this is actually going to be two problems here because, well, this problem set is going to have 5 joules to work with. This problem set is going to have 10 joules to work with and we're going to lose some amount of energy here with this bounce. Now, we'll try to look at the bounce as far as the forces are concerned over here. It's not going to be totally accurate, but it's going to be more of a conceptual, as close as we can get kind of scenario. So, kinetic energy at the bottom. Let's move down here, give me some room. I've got kinetic energy at the bottom here, and that's going to be equal to the tendrils that we had before, and we know that kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. And just to be appropriate, we're going to say, hey, the energy in the beginning should equal the energy in the end for this first part. And we will lose energy definitely during the bounce itself, but not whenever it's falling down to the ground. So <clears throat> 10 is equal to 1 half the mass, 0.5. And we want that velocity. So let's go ahead and say, all right, move this over. Well, half moved over is multiplied by 2. 2 times 10 is going to be 20. 20 divided by, well, 0.5 is going to be doubled out again, so 40, and just to make sure, we've got 10 times 2 divided by 0.5 <clears throat> equals 40, and we'll be good by saying this is going to be v squared, v squared is going to be square rooted anyway, so we got the square root of 40, square root of 40 is going to be 6 something, 6.325 let's say, 6.325. 2, 5 meters per second as far as this, is this falling velocity here. For the other side we have the same scenario except that we're going from kinetic energy to this 5 joules and I can set it up the exact same way, it really doesn't matter. We'll just say hey my kinetic energy here on the right side is going to be 5, we've lost 5 during the collision and that's going to be equal to 1 half m v squared. <clears throat> so looking at this we're going to move that 2 over 2 times 5 is going to be 10, 10 divided by 0.5 is going to be 20 20 and the square root of because of that v squared there. So the v on the other side, <coughs> square root of 20. And we're looking at 4.472. So 4.472. Want to keep the same number of sig figs there. About 4 is good. Anything more than that's probably a little bit in excess. And so let's take a look at this again. We've got our work done, potential energy. 10 joules of it goes to kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is going to be based off of velocity. Found out the velocity is going to be 6.325 meters per second right before it hits the ground. It's going to hit the ground, lose some energy there, bounce back up. It's going to be at 4.472 meters per second as it bounces back up. And if we uh, want to, we can take a look now at momentum because the momentum is going to be a little bit different of a problem. In coming down here, momentum, <coughs> weird letter P, is equal to mv. And the way that we change the momentum, the change in momentum is either going to be some kind of m delta v, some kind of change in velocity there, or it's going to be due to a force for a period of time. 
So <clears throat> looking at this, we do have a definite change in velocity. Uh, our momentum in the beginning is going to be the mass times that velocity right here. So if we look at the momentum for the first part, the initial momentum, let's say, right before that bounce occurs, that's going to be the mass, 0.5, times the velocity, 6.325. I know these numbers aren't very nice, but we just had nice numbers to begin with, and we screwed them up. <coughs> and so my momentum is going to be half of 6.325, and that's going to be 3.1625. And momentum does not really have a nice unit. It's going to be kilograms, meters per second, mass times velocity. The momentum to end <coughs> right after the collision, though, is going to be 0.5 times the velocity of 4.472, so half of that guy, and 4.472 divided by 2 is going to be 2.236. Now there is one group, big consideration that we need to make, and that's going to be which, what is positive and what is negative. And so since we come in, going down, go out, going up, I'm just going to say that the beginning is going to be our positive one, and our outgoing is going to be our negative one, we switch directions. And so to do that, we just say, hey, well, this velocity, although I know it came up positive here because of that square, should actually be the opposite sign of this velocity since it's going the other way. And that would make this momentum actually negative. And so if we looked at a change of momentum, that's going to be equal to our difference here. And if you notice, if we didn't do that, our change of momentum wouldn't be as great because we would find the difference between these two. But now, we're, if we find a difference between these two, we aren't going to find the difference between 3 and 2. We're actually going to add these 3 and 2 together. So 3.1625 plus 2.236 for that total difference, because we're going from negative to positive or positive to negative, of 5.398. So 5.39, I'm going to call it 5.4 <clears throat> kilograms, meters per second. All right. So that change in momentum is, is, is a lot higher than it would have been if we were just going from three down to two. That's like I'm going to run into a um, maybe like a, a, a breakable wall, like a drywall, but I, I, I bust through it. So I'm going to slow down, but I'm going to keep on going because that, that's just ridiculous. But yeah, anyway, busting through a drywall. <clears throat> Looking at the other definition for momentum, for momentum if we uh, did consider that the time of the bounce was 0.08 seconds. We can actually try to find the average force there. So as we said before, the change in momentum is also equal to some force. And this force is not going to be constant. It's actually going to be like nothing because it didn't touch the ground yet. Then it's going to be like poof and it's going to spike up. Uh, but we're going to talk about the average force here. And, and that's for a period of time. And so force for distance would be uh, the change in energy or work. So if we do that, we would say, hey, 5.4 is our change in momentum. The force is kind of what we want on average and the time if we state it is 0 0.08. Now it's really hard to just kind of like get that number from recording but yeah we just said 0 0.08 it sounds about right. <clears throat> divide out 5.4 divided by 0 0.08 is going to be a force on average of 67.5 newtons. Okay so that's that's kind of big. Um, Let's see, if, if you are 5 kilograms, you are, you know, 50 newtons, 5 times 10. So, what's a, what's a kilogram is about 2 pounds, about 2.2 pounds around there. So, that, that's that's a bit considerable for just, just a half a kilogram mass to come in and hit the ground. Uh, depending upon the surface area that it hits, you probably don't want to put your foot there. But uh, let's go let's go over here and talk about this graph. And so I didn't I didn't know what our force would be. So it looks like it's going to, you know, it's, I didn't know how to scale it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's pretty good. Let me just add one more up there just so that we can have a seven. So um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. <clears throat> and these are all going to be in the Newtons. Might want to put down my unit here. And over here we have seconds. And so we have this average force of 67.5 Newtons, and it's going to exist for... Uh, 0.08 seconds and so here's my 0.08 seconds and I'm just gonna do a dotted line for right now and it's gonna go up to about yay high and like this <clears throat> okay now why am I doing dotted lines it's because this really isn't actually how the force is gonna look um, <clears throat> 
between 0 and 0.8 seconds, remember at 0 seconds of this impact, this thing wasn't touching the ground and it, it, it's just starting to touch it. So really the force would be 0 and at the end it's leaving the ground so again the force needs to be 0 because we're, we're not going to touch this object anymore. So on average this force is going to be about 67.5 um, newtons. And this area of this shape should be, again, looking at areas and slopes and all that stuff, for, the, for our area here, our area is going to be force, this axis times time, this axis, that's force times time, that's going to be changing momentum. So the area of this should be 67.5. <clears throat> now, the force for real, it's probably going to look like, and I'm just going to sketch it out, but it's probably going to be like, like super high, like in the middle at 0.4 seconds, it's going to be spiked up as high as it can go, and then some, you know, it's going to go come back down to zero at the end here. And I kind of ran out of room on my paper, so I wanted to stop. It's going to go higher than that, so it's going to go like that. But the area of that of that triangle, that spike shape, should be the same area as this rectangle of the average force. So the peak force here is it should be way more than 67.5. 67.5 is the average force. And so in reality, whenever you were, if you're actually doing this experiment, with, let's say with a force plate and this ball falls down on the force plate, um, that, that, that force is going to spike up and have a peak value way higher than 67.5, but on average, the force would be 67.5, all right? So looking at that, if you were able to find out the area of this spike, that should be the same area as this, as this rectangle. And that would be the impulse graph, the change in momentum, the impulse of this and that's either going to be force for a period of time or it's going to be some mass times velocity change um, in this case all right so energy momentum a little bit uh, the biggest key here was that momentum does care about direction so make sure you include those negatives if you end up going back the other way all right that'll do it for this one